discussions of the past year questions. In this video, we shall discuss further statistics, paper 4, uh, May-June 2024, paper 43. Let's take a look at the question number 1. A colleague uses uh, two assessments, X and Y, when interviewing applicants, applicants for research posts at college. These assessments has been used for a large number of applicants in these years. The score for a random sample of nine applicants who took assessment X are uh, as following. Then uh, we have the score of a random sample of 10 applicants who took the assessment Y are uh, as following. The interviewer believed that the population median score from assessment X is lower than the population median score from the assessment Y. Carry out a Wilcoxon rank sum test at 1% significant level to test whether the interviewer's belief is supported by the data. Okay, so for these questions, uh, in, they mentioned that we need to use the Wilcoxon rank sum test. Okay, so to save time, I have built the table over here already. So uh, for this, uh, my solution here, my way of solving it is I will uh, rearrange this table in the ascending order. Okay, I rearrange the data in the ascending order. Okay, uh, so this, all the data over here, the order is mixed up. But I, when I build the data, I will try to arrange them in the ascending order. That will make my job easier. So from here, you have X and Y, both of them, then all the, uh, is ascending order. So right here, you can see that uh, we have, this one is only have nine. This one have 10 sample. So the nine is smaller, 10 is bigger. So over here, we will call the M as a nine. We call the N as a 10. Okay, so because in the formula booklet, the N is uh, taken as uh, the smaller value for the number of data. So I use M as a 9, N as a 10. Okay, so now I need to do the ranking. To do the rank sum test, I need to do the ranking. The ranking, I start from the lowest rank is rank number 1. So this is the lowest rank, rank 1, and then 2. Then we have 3, 4, 5, 6. Then we have 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, 17, 18, and 19. Okay, so total we have 19 of the data. Then just total them up. Total them up, you get this one as a 70. Then this one is the 120. Okay, so I need to build this table in order to get the total of the rank. Now, uh, we need to build the hypothesis now. Null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis, we will uh, just say that the median population median score, okay, the population's median score, mx is equals to the my versus the alternative uh, hypothesis is population median score that the MX is actually lower than the MY. Okay, so this is what we have. Then uh, we need to find the critical value. Okay, so for this case, your critical value, we just need to take it from the table. Critical value from table. Okay, so just look from the table. Your N is a 9, N is a 10, and this is a one tail test, okay, because this one is only one tail. So it's one tail only, so we just use one tail test. Then uh, let's look from the table directly. Then you can get this answer is uh, 61. Okay, now we want to find the test at a 6. Before we find the test at a 6, our RM is the lowest value, uh, 70. Okay, yeah, this one's 70 because our M is 9, right? 9 means uh, you have the data of 9 here. So the rank is total of the rank is 70. Then I need to calculate this M, M plus N plus 1 minus the RM. Okay, so this one it will be uh, 
Okay, so I, I have calculated over here m m plus n plus one minus r m. So this one it will be mm, nine and twenty minus a seventy. So if you use your calculator one one zero. So your test at a six t will be the minimum between 70 and 110. Okay, so over here, of course, 70 is lower. So we just take our test at a 6 as 70. Then if you compare the test at a 6 with the critical value, from here you can see that your test at a 6 is actually greater than the critical value. So this is a Wilcoxon test, and the, uh, the result will be opposite than the usual hypothesis test that we are we have been doing. So this one, uh, for this case, we will go for accept H now. Okay, so now we can go for the conclusion. Conclusion is there is insufficient evidence to support that the population median score population median score mx is less than my just like that okay so this will be the answer for the question number one now we move on to the question number two Take a look at question number two. A rowing club has a large number of members. A random sample of 12 of these members is taken and the pulse rate, x beats per minute of each is measured and 30 minutes training uh, session. 98% uh, of the confidence interval of the population mean pulse rate, mu, uh, is calculated from the sample as uh, the mu is between 64.22 and 68.66 calculate the sum of the x and the sum of the x square okay so these are the information given so that means this is the confidence interval of 98 percent so what you need to do first is that because this n is considered as small less than 30 considered small so we will use t distributions to calculate the critical value okay so your Degree of freedom will be 11. Okay, so your degree of freedom will be 11. And your critical value, T of the degree of freedom 11, and this one is a 0 0.99. Okay, then uh, just use the formula table, for, uh, formula, uh, formula booklet, 2.718. Okay, so this is the critical value. Then uh, from the interval over here the formula will be the bar x plus the 2.718 square root of s square over the 12 is equals to the 68.66 and the bar smaller value bar x minus a 7 point uh, 2.718 square root of s square divided by 12 is equal to 64.22. This is the equation 1, this is the equation 2. Take the equation 1 plus the equation 2, you will have the uh, bar x. Okay, Let's add together, let's add these two values together and divide by 2. Okay, So you get the bar x will be equal to the 66 point. After you add together and then divide 2. So you get 66.44. Okay, that is your bar x. However, the symbol for the bar x is actually the sum of the x divided by 12 is equal to the 66.44. So from here you can find your sum of the x is 66.44 multiplied by 12. 
And if you press a calculator, you get 797.28. Okay, then after that, to find the sum of the x squared, we just take the equation number 1 minus the equation number 2, and then we uh, divide by 2. Okay. This one, okay, let me divide by 2. So we just uh, minus them together, then you'll get this one as a 2 of the uh, multiplied by 2.718x square root of s square divided by 12 is equals to the 4.44. So from here, you can find your s square is equal to the 8.0055. So the s square is actually the unbiased estimations of the population variance and the formula for the unbiased estimations of the population is 1 over n minus 1 sum of the x squared minus the sum of the x squared divided by 12 is equal to the 8.0055 okay so this one it will be 0.38 then from here, just press a calculator, then you can get the sum of the x squared is uh, 53059.34. Okay, so over here, I will leave the answer in two decimal places. That's all. Okay, so this is the answer for the number 2 part A. Then number 2 part B, state an assumption that is necessary for the confidence interval to be valid. Okay. So for this case, uh, since we are using the t distribution, so the assumptions for the t distribution that fits uh, the data or the population distribution must be a normal distribution. So over here, the assumption is the population distribution distribution is normally distributed. The population, I think we just say that the population is normally distributed with, okay? So just say that the population is normally distributed. Okay, that's all. So this is the answer for the number 2B. Now we move on to the number 3. Okay. Okay, now we move on to number three. There are three bus companies in the city that council is investigating whether the buses reliably arrive at their destinations on time. The result from random sample of buses from each company are summarized in the following table. Okay, so the table summary, the uh, arrival time for each company. Test at 5% significant level whether the reliability of the buses is independent of bus company. So, in order to do this hypothesis test, we know that this is actually the chi-square test. And uh, in order to do the chi-square test, uh, since this is a contingency table, we will redraw again this table. To save time, I have drawn the table for you. Uh, then uh, I need to find out the expected value here. These are the expected value, E1. E2, E3, and so on. Okay, so we need to find the expected value for each of every uh, value in the column. Okay, so how do you find the expected value for the first one? The expected value for the first one, you just take the 54 multiply 80 divided by 250. So if you just take 80, 54 multiply 80 divided by 250, you get 17.38. Okay, so same thing happened. For this value, if you want to find this value, just take 1, 2, 4, multiply 80, divided by 50 again. So this, if you press a calculator, and you will get this answer as 39.68. And uh, the last one, over here, you can take 72, multiply 80, divided by 250. So if you do so, then you can find the answer will be uh, 23 point 
23, wait up, 23.04. Okay, 23.04. Okay, so you need to aware that uh, these three values add together, it will be same as AP as well. Okay, so uh, to save time, I shall not go into calculate one by one over here. I just direct give you the result for the rest of the expected value. It will be 49.60 here, and then 28.80. So this one is a 15.12, and 34.72, and 20.16. Okay, so these are the expected value for each and every element inside the column. So now we are ready to do the hypothesis test. First, we write down the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So since this is uh, talking about whether they are independent or not, so the null hypothesis is always independent. Okay, so we just say that the reliability of buses, reliability of buses, is independent of bus company. Then uh, the alternative hypothesis is that the reliability of buses is not independent bus company. Okay, so these are the uh, two statements of the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Now we can find the critical value. So this uh, degree of freedom over here is uh, three column. 3 row minus 1 multiplied by 3 column minus 1, so you get a 4. Okay, so your critical value, the chi-square of the degree of freedom 4 and uh, significant level, uh, the confidence level, significant level 5%, so that means the confidence level will be 95%. So this one press the curve, I just check from the formula table. Then you can get this one as a 9.488. Okay. Then uh, now we can find the test statistics. The test statistics, I just put chi square. So I will go uh, by row. I will go by row. I will go by row. Okay, like this. So this one. So if I go by row, then I will get. Uh, the formula for this, it will be the sum of the OI minus the EI square divided by EI. So for the first row, the three value, it will be uh, 1.2893, plus the 1.7338. Then now is second row, 2.3615, 0 0.1161, 0 1.5265, and the third row, 1.0678, plus the 0 0.27, 2, 2, plus the 0 0.2314. Okay, so now if you add all the nine value together, you will get the test at a six as eight point six one. Okay, then uh, you compare the test at a six with the critical value. So by comparing the test at a six and the critical value, who is bigger? The uh, test at a six is less than the critical value. So over here you accept H now. So if you accept H now, your conclusion over here, not enough place. 
I need to squeeze in my statement over here. So over here, I just say that, okay, chi square less than the chi square of 4, 0 0.95. So over here, you accept it now. So your conclusion. There is insufficient evidence. to support that reliability of buses is not independent. of bus company. So we just need to copy down the statement that we have stated on the uh, now hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. That's all. So this is the answer for the question number three. Okay. Now we move on to the question number four. Okay. Now we take a look at question number four. The random variable x has a BGF given as such. Then they want you to find the constant c. So right here, to find the constant c, we know that if you put the d as a one inside, you'll get a one. So you have a c one and two power five, you get a one. So your c is one over 32. Done. That is the answer for the part A. Now to find the uh, part B, that is the E. E means uh, G prime of the one. Okay, so we need to find the G prime first. So first of all, we write the GX as uh, one over 32. Since we have found the value of the C as one over 32, we write it like this. So to find EX, you need to differentiate this. Keep the left differentiate the right plus keep the right differentiate the left okay so over here I think we can just factorize it we will get uh, 1 over 32 1 plus d to the power 4 over here you have a 5d plus d uh, 1 plus d So expand and simplify. At the end, you get 1 over 32, 1 plus d power 4, 60 plus 1. To find your ex is actually the g prime of 1. So you will just have 1 over 32, 2 power 4 and 7, and your answer will be 7 over 2. That will be the answer for the part b. Now we move to the part C. Part C, they are telling you that the Y is the sum of the two independent values of X, which means that the Y can be written X as 1 plus X2. So to find the BGF of the Y is actually the same as the BGF of X1 plus X2. But since X1 and X2 actually they share the same BGF, you can just write it as a GXD and then square. And you can make this become a 1 over 32, t 1 plus t power 5, and then you square the whole thing. Then uh, you get this one as a 1, 0, 2, 4, t square 1 plus t to the power of 10. So now to find the variance of y, we will need to differentiate the gy. Okay. So over right here, uh, first prime, first order, you just keep the left, differentiate the right, plus keep the right, differentiate the left. Okay, 
So over here, uh, we can factorize it out. Take the D and uh, 1 plus D to the power of 9. Okay, so if you take it out, then you can uh, have this as a 5D plus the 1 plus D. So at the end, you get 1 over 5, 1, 2. Uh, okay, I think I don't want to make it. I just multiply this inside here. Okay, so uh, I just combine them together, make it become 1 plus D to the power of 9. And we have a 6D squared plus D. Okay. So this will be my G prime. To find variance, we need to find the G double prime. So to find the G double prime, we have to keep the left. Differentiate the right. 12D plus 1. Plus keep the right. Differentiate the left. Okay, so basically we just need to uh, find the G prime of 1. Just use this value. Replace the T as a 1 inside. Then you will get this one as the 7. Then the G double prime of 1 over here, you will get uh, okay, this one you need to press calculator. Mm. The 3 divide 2 plus the 30 89 over Okay, so this is actually 9 over. So your variance of the y, the formula will be the g prime, g double prime of 1 plus the g prime of 1 minus the g prime of 1 square. So this will be the same as 89 over 2 plus 7 minus a 7 squared. Press the calculator and your answer will be the 5 over 2. That will be the answer for the part C. Okay, kind of long here. So uh, this answer is a 5 over 2. Then I will go for the part D. So part D is they want to find the probability for y equal to 5. So I will be using this PGF. Just copy down. Okay, let's copy down only. So your GY is actually uh, 1 over 1024 D square 1 plus D to the power of 10. So I need to look for the d power 5 in order to find the probability of y equal to 5. So in order to get d power 5, since I have a d square here, this one I just expand using the binomial expansion. Okay, just use the binomial expansion. So you have a 1 plus the 10 c1, 10 c2, uh, d square plus the 10 C cubed, the 10 C3, D cubed, and so on. I just need to show until D cubed because over here, multiply this, I will get D to the power of 5. Therefore, I can find the probability already. So we're just focusing on the probability for Y equal to 5 is actually 1 over 1024 multiplied by 10, multiplied by 10 C3, multiplied by 10 C3. So we just need to use a calculator and C3 divided by uh, 1024. So it will be uh, 15 over 28, 128. 
I will leave them in the fraction form. That will be better. Okay, so this will be the answer for the D. Now we move on. Question number five. Okay, now let's take a look at question number five. That continuous random variable X has the CDF given as following. Then they now they want to find the PDF. They want you to sketch the PDF. So in order to find the PDF, we need to differentiate. First of all, your PDF is actually f prime of x. So you differentiate, you get this one as the x minus the 2 over the 6. And uh, this one differentiate, this one differentiate. The second one over here, if you differentiate, you will get this as the 8 minus the x over 12. This is a 0, a 2 until 4. This is a 4 until 8. And the rest are 0. Okay. Then now we can sketch the PDF. I draw freehand. So in exam, you better use ruler. With a proper scale, we have a 2, 4, 6, 8. And if you put 2 inside here, and put 4 inside here, if you put 2 inside here, you get a 0. If you put a 4 inside here, you will get 2 over 6. 2 over 6 is 1 over 3. Now that if you put 4 inside here, you also get 1 over 3. And when you put 8 inside here, you will get a 0. So just draw the diagram using the solid line. So this will be the answer. This will be the answer of the question A. This is how you sketch a graph. Okay. So after you sketch a graph, then now the part B of the questions, they want you to find the mean, the EX. So to find the EX, it's actually need to integrate from 2 until X, 8, X, FX. But since uh, 2 until 8, you have two separate uh, functions. So it will be uh, 2 to 4 plus the 4 to 8. So the idea is just need to multiply x in both of it. Okay, multiply x. So you get this one as a x squared minus x over 6. This one you will get 8x minus the x squared over the 12. So if you take the uh, integrate them directly, you get an x cube over 18 minus the x squared over 6. 2 to 4 plus the 4x square oh, okay x square over 3 so if you direct integrate you will get x square over 3 minus the x cube over 36 so this one is uh, from 4 until 8 just substitute the value inside you can get 8 over 9 plus the 2 over 9 plus the 64 over 9 minus the 32 over 9. So you have uh, uh, 42 over 9. 42 over 9 actually can simplify further. All of them can divide by 3. So if you divide by 3, then you get the mean. It will be 14 over 3. Just like that. Done. And now we move on to the question C. Find the exact value for IQR, interquartile range. To find the interquartile range, we need to find Q3 and Q1. So to find Q3, we use the cumulative frequency. CDF, Q3, is equals to the 3 over 4. And we have a Q1, will give you 1 over 4. Okay. So Q3 is at here. Okay. So you get... The, oh, sorry, I suppose to refer as the CDF, not the PDF. Huh? So over here, I just, uh, my Q1 is over here. 
my q2 is over here okay so uh what we should do is just substitute the value so this one it will be q3 uh oops sorry this one will be one minus the eight minus a q3 square divided by 12 it divided by 24 sorry copy wrongly divided by 24 is equals to the 3 over 4 so from the calculator you can get this as a 6 then your 8 minus a q3 is equal to plus minus a 6 then your q3 is equal to the 8 minus a 6 because of your q3 is only between 4 to 8 okay your q3 is between 4 to 8 then as for the q1 same thing you just use the formula q1 minus 2 square over 12 is equal to 1 over 4 you have a q1 minus 2 square is equals to a 3 then your q1 is equal to 2 plus minus a 3 so at the end your q1 is equal to the 2 plus a 3 this is your q1 okay the reason is because your q1 is between 2 to 4 uh, because of this reason okay so we have found the Q1 and we have found the Q3. So your IQR is a Q3 minus a Q1. It will be 8 minus a 6 minus a 2 minus a 3. Then you get 6 minus a 6 minus a 3. Okay, so this is the answer for the question number, uh, number 5, C. And uh, okay, that's all. So move on. We have question number six. Okay, now question number six. Siva is uh, investigating the lengths of the tails of adult wallabies in two regions of Australia, X and Y. He chose a random sample of 50 adults wallabies from uh, region A and records it the length in XCM of their tails. He also chooses a random sample of 40 adults wallabies from region Y and records the lengths in, of their tails. His results are summarized as following here. It cannot be assumed that the population variance of the two distributions are the same. Okay, uh, We cannot assume that they are the same. So find a 90% 90, 90 confidence interval for the difference between the population mean length of the tail and the adults wallaby in region X and Y. Okay, so we want to find the difference of the population mean length of the region X and Y. So over right here, first of all, we need to find the bar X. The bar X is a 1080 divided by N. Press the calculator, you get 21.6. Okay. So your bar y is equals to the 940 divided by 40. Press the calculator, you will get 23.9, uh, Then uh, now we want to find the unbiased estimations of the population variance. So over here, we need to find sx square. Formula for sx square is 1 over 49. 2, 3, 4, 8, 0 minus the 1, 0, 8, 0 square divided by 50. So press the calculator, we are having the 3.1020. Then the same thing happened for the SY square. It will be 1 over 39. 2, 2, 2, 2, 0 minus the 9, 4, 0 square over 40. So press the calculator, you get this as a 
3.333 it falls uh, decimal places so now we need to combine them the combined variance it will be s squared combined variance s squared is s s squared over the nx plus the sy squared over the ny so this is the formula, but uh, to save time, I will not write out this formula anymore. I just direct apply this result as 3.1020 divided by 50 plus the 3.3333 divided, uh, divided by 40. So if you join them up together, you get the answer as a 0 0.14537 okay then uh, we need to find a critical value what is the alpha alpha is the 90 percent 90 percent it will be 95 from the table you get this as the 1.645 okay 1.645 then, uh, therefore, your 90% of the CI uh, of milk, it will be equal to the bar X minus the bar Y plus minus Z alpha uh, plus minus Z 0 0.95. And square root of S square. I uh, don't need to divide N anymore. Okay, the square root of S square root. So this is the formula. And if you replace the, the value, so your mu is equals to the 21.6 minus the 23.5 plus minus 1.645 square root of the S square. So simplify them at the end, you get your meal is between uh, essentially inclusive. You can just write the meal in the bracket like this, smaller value and the bigger value. So the smaller value is negative 2.53 and the bigger value will be negative 1.27. Okay, so that that will be the answer for the question number 6A. Okay, now we move on to the 6B. The population mean length of the tails of a thousand wallabies in region X and Y are mu X and mu Y respectively. Has at 10% significant level the null hypothesis. The question giving you that the null hypothesis is just telling the mu Y minus the mu X equals 1.1. Against the alternative hypothesis is that the mu y minus the mu x is greater than 1.1. So this one is a right tail test. Okay. So now um, what we need to do is we need to find the critical value. So critical value it will be 10% significant level. So since it's only right tail, no two tail, we don't need to divide the alpha by 10. So this one is 0 0.9. Use the formula booklet, you can get this one as a 1.282. Okay. Now we want to find the test at the 6. Test at the 6, uh, just a formula. Okay. Z is equals to the uh, because it's a uh, y in front, x behind, yeah, according to the null hypothesis, so it will be the bar y minus a bar x and uh, minus the mu y minus the mu x. Mu y and minus mu x is already known as a 1.1, 1. 1. 1, but okay, lah, never mind, we just write down. Just write mu y minus a mu x divided by the square root of s square so this one mu y minus mu x is 
23.5 minus the 21.6 minus the 1.1 divided by square root of S square. What is your S square? Your S square is a zero point one four five three seven. Press the calculator, then your answer will be two point zero nine eight. So you compare your test statistics, compare it with the critical value. So usually I will just put modulus. Then this one is actually greater so if it's greater then you have to reject each number so your conclusion is there is sufficient evidence to support that mu y minus mu x greater than 1.1. You okay, just write an answer like that. Oh, but the question mentioned, state your conclusion in the context of the questions. Uh, so we need to describe. Uh, so we need to describe. Actually, just write mu y minus mu x equal to 1.1 also can uh, because the question actually stated in this way. Okay, the question is stated in this way. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's all. So this is the answer for the question number six. And moving on, uh, no more. Okay, so this is the answer. And this is the last question for this paper. So I will stop the video here. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.